In the Old Testament, there's another man. His name is Mordecai. And I'm going to put him in the same uh, category as the man who ran this banquet. We know that he was a cousin of Esther, an older man, like a father figure to her. He trained her and prepared her for what he thought would be a wise move for the Jewish people to have someone in the royal palace who could serve as some sort of a lobbyist for their cause. But all of that changed. One day, it was no longer a beauty contest because he found out that Haman was going to kill all the Jews. We've had our moment like that in America. We're at it right now with critical race theory, with wokeness, cancel culture, with all the things that are being said and done to alter the landscape of American, we are going to lose our freedom without a miracle. And the whole world's watching it. Anyone that believes that Joe Biden was actually put there has got a lot of explaining to do. There's something going on. Oh, I'm not a conspiracy theory person. I hate those things. But I do know because I'm watching the devastation of my country. And I know that the role of the church is exactly the same as this story. It's time for the pastors to get in front of their people and say, look, we used to be one way, but now we have to be another way. We are all going to have to oppose this agenda. We have to oppose it. Am I right? To go. We have to oppose it. In chapter 3 of Esther, Mordecai undergoes a massive transformation. He finds out and he begins in the center of town to cry out. The Bible says it was an intense cry. He replaced his clothes with sackcloth and ashes. The rumor that he was not far from the palace making this ruckus got to Esther and she didn't know why because she was cut off from communication. Today our youth are cut off from communication. They think they're getting information, but it should have been a clue when Twitter and Facebook and YouTube began banning anybody that disagreed with the national narrative. That should have been a clue. You know, back in the day, that was called censorship. Today, the youth believe it's for the greater good because they're drinking woke cola in my opinion. <laughs> now, the moment has arrived where the news gets to Esther. Mordecai is in sackcloth and ashes. She says, I don't know why. She thinks he's having a bad day. So she sends him a suit of clothes. Take off the sackcloth and ashes and put this on. That's what pastors are doing across America. Guys like us are radicals. Those of us that have called for national repentance, we're radicals. And they said, listen, put the glad rags back on your preaching. Not when a nation is at stake. Not when freedom is at stake. That's not what you do. You don't do that. So, finally, she gets, sends word back. It's in the 14th verse of chapter 4. And said, listen, the beauty contest is over. There are churches in Roseville, Rockland, that have been built on marketing. Built on entertainment. Built on a model that is no longer valid. Not in a national takeover. What Mordecai is saying to Esther is, God gave you beauty, but that beauty has now got to be put on the line. The churches that exist to have only 
the express service, get people in, get them out, don't say anything threatening, make them feel good about themselves. That was good back then. That's before Godzilla came to town. Now, let me tell you, the world has changed. Now is the time for spirit-filled, fiery, Holy Ghost centers that operate in the power of God and preach the unapologetic gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what it's for now. Come on now. L let me hear it for Christ right now. Not mine. That's right. The beautiful thing about the Central Valley is that it's raw. There's no pretense. There's no cosmetic uh, layer. There's no filter. Somebody in a homeless camp down in uh, Fresno, a woman, just a, mi a middle class woman, comes home one day to find her whole family murdered. Husband, three children. And she ran for her life. Ended up in a homeless camp because she didn't know why they were killed or what was going on. She didn't know anything. You can't believe what the news does not report. So she makes her way one day, one of our workers, one of Frank's workers, hands her an invitation to come to the tent. She walks into the tent sheepishly terrified. It's an absolute miracle, wasn't it, Frank, that she was even in that tent. And you don't know how many ministers have told me, when you talk that political stuff, the anointing is not going to flow. There's not going to be any anointing. One, I just had it. You know, I'm, I'm Latino and I'm German. So when I, when I get angry, the Latino side goes, kill him. And the German side being more analytical and controlled said, control your emotions and think of ways to kill him. So, so this pastor, and, and I'm going to finish this story, don't worry. Uh, this pastor says, you're nothing but a politician. So I, I, Latino side, German side, and the Holy Ghost side. So I looked at him and I said, why aren't you condemning abortion from your pulpit? I said, why aren't you? And I said, why aren't you standing for biblical marriage in your pulpit? He said, because I would lose people. I said, you mean you would lose votes? I said, you're the politician, not me. You're the politician. <laughs> 